The coronavirus pandemic has changed the way we live. I don't think anyone could have foreseen it from the average man. I certainly didn't. Since this whole thing has started, that's when I started my YouTube channel. I wanted to show you what it's like to be on the front line, what it's like on the day to day. And that's what this channel is really about. So I made a whole playlist just about this. I particularly wanted to make a video for you guys to see how it is from each angle within the health system. I think the way we work as doctors has forever changed. I think the NHS has forever changed. It's already under tension and now it's bursting at the seams post COVID, if I can use that term. I think a lot is missed within the general narrative and that's why I wanted to put this together. You also touched on, you know, the, the isolation aspect and the mental health aspect. One of my key themes that I always want to talk about is to humanise medical workers. Often we're underlooked and overexpected of. You touched kind of briefly upon how it's been for you in terms of, you know, I think all of us have felt the mental health side of things. We felt isolated. We felt like we've had a tough time. But could you just tell me a bit more about how that's been for the past year? Yeah, I think on, on a uh, speaking on a from a per, from personal experience rather than uh, trying to generalise, I can tell you my situation. Uh, so I I have uh, two uh, parents in laws uh, who are extremely vulnerable. Uh, I have a, one of my children that's got a uh, immunodeficiency. Um, so just it wasn't just me thinking I'm a doctor. This is what I'm trained to do. You know, if I die on the job, I die on the job. That's my choice. Uh, and you know, it had no, there was no second thought. This is my job. This is where I'm needed. Off I go. Uh, and I think that, that that's the sort of thing that uh, gets overlooked a lot. So I wanted to talk to a GP as well. In fact, she was my old trainer. She helped me become the GP that I am. Um, and then, of course, the second wave came and we knew it was com coming, but we were, I, I think we felt relatively battle ready. Um, and um, because we, we, we'd faced it before, so it was quite unlike getting ready for the first wave. But of course, when it came, it was much worse than the <laughs> first wave. And that's, that, that was probably the hardest time because at this, this point we were having patients most days sick with COVID um, uh, coming to the practice that needed assessment. Um, we had many more admissions and we also had many more deaths. Um, so it hit the, the practice population much, much worse. Um, Let's think ahead. What about the future doctors? How did they feel? What are they going through? What about the med students? How have they got through with this? And um, they already feel disconnected from what's happening in Southampton because they're nowhere near it. Um, but by having all these things online, there was a huge kind of uptake of things and people reaching out for support and support being available online. Um, so I definitely see how COVID has helped um, in that regard. How hard was it as more and more people were admitted? Was it almost like a sort of tsunami of, of patients being admitted? So I worked in general practice, but I've also been working in a and &E. I kind of enjoy my role wherever I go, you see. So wherever we've been, yeah, I would agree with you that it has been really tough at some times. And we just have to acclimatise to working that hard. And it becomes really difficult, no matter where you are, what position you are. And I just want to say it's not just the doctors, although I'm speaking as a doctor, I want to, you know, shout out the people who are driving the buses, who are working in Tesco, the healthcare assistants, the cleaners, the porters. These are really important people as well that kept our society going. You, your diaries go through how you've dealt with the, the mental health issues in the past year. I think mental health had become something that we were perhaps more aware of before COVID, but I think we've become really aware of it uh, in, the, in the last year. And, and uh, though I'm not a, a health professional, we're concentrating on how we've coped in lockdown and, and uh, how that's affected us. But I think there'll be a number of mental health issues that will come to fruition as we as lockdown is eased and, and we go back to normal society because people will find that a struggle. How have you learned? What have you coped with? Absolutely. I 100% agree. The Centre for Mental Health, I believe, late last year said there are going to be 10 million people having mental health problems coming forward. For me, personally, uh, I found exercise very helpful. I'm also a Muslim. You know, we pray five times a day. When the lockdown happened first last year, it was Ramadan, particularly long days. So we're not eating and drinking from sunset till sundown. It's about to be Ramadan again, or already is. 
in the case now. So faith is was very important for me. And it's also recognised in studies that faith is very important uh, as a protective factor against mental health. But, you know, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, the vaccine programme and the wonderful NHS has been so great. Uh, and we're seeing the contrast of that in Europe, aren't we? Yes, I think we are globally. I think, but uh, yes, mm. uh, that's. I think people would echo that. You mentioned your faith there. I mean, it, it's it's been mm. a. It sounds like it's been important and has been a, a crutch for you, particularly mentally. For for a number of people, though, mm. they, they would have found themselves questioning faith through this time as well. Mm. Have you? Have it been a struggle, or were you 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 your your um, belief solid all the way through? That's a really good question. For myself, I just think: look at society. All the coronavirus in the world could fit in a Coca Cola can. Our society was decimated by something that we can't smell, touch, feel, hear, see, and our society's fallen apart. So I think we do all need something to believe in, greater than what we're seeing. And I think just as a doctor, because we're seeing death and we're, we're having to question the larger things. So for me, my, my strength, my faith strengthened in all of this time, if I'm honest. But I hear what you're saying. But I think there's more to be discovered and more to think about. One of the days and one of the entries were particularly poignant and sad. I wanted to interview one of the people involved in that story. Stick with me. Take a listen. And yes, I think, you know, once that initial shock goes, that's what you then start to begin to, to grieve. And I, I think, you know, that's something that will probably resonate with, with many of people across the globe, not just here in England. Um, but, you know, just because these things have been so unexpected. Certainly the way that I found out was... Um, it came to as a huge shock to my system. I was in Dubai on a business trip. Um, he had just come out of hospital the week before having suffered sepsis um, because he was a Crohn's patient and, and ended up um, in hospital the week before. Um, he was discharged on the basis that his test results had come back absolutely fine, albeit he was a little bit weak. Um, and I found out that he had collapsed um, the ambulance took a very long time to, to come, uh, at least over an hour. And uh, I found out at the doors of Dubai Airport as I was walking through that he hadn't made it um, and he had died of a cardiac arrest. And uh, that in itself was a shock. Um, sitting on an airplane for seven hours on my own trying to collect my thoughts you just it hits you so hard that you become numb inside um and it's it's a pain that overtakes your whole body whereby it's not just emotional pain you're feeling you literally feel the physical pain inside of your body, it completely shatters you literally into, into pieces. Um, certainly when you find out in, uh, again, in unexpected ways. Um, so yeah, I mean, for people who have, have certainly lost loved ones throughout COVID, not being able to say goodbye, um, not being able to have, you know, the, the goodbyes that they deserve um i i totally understand that um and and resonate with those feelings and it is the most difficult um process i think a person can ever go through and it 